This is the world's first lightweight tube amp. And that's the first point Blackstar put on the marketing materials for this, their newest line of St. James amps. That's cool, and we'll get back to that in a second. But first and foremost, the most important factor with the tube amp is the tone. Does this amp sound good? This is the first Blackstar I've ever tried. They're a British company founded by ex Marshall employees, so you know, classic British sounds. And this 6L6 version of the St. James is their stab at modern high gain. So, modern high gain classic British heritage. I had no idea what to expect, but this amp still surprised me in a number of different ways. So let's take a closer look. Alright, so even though I'd never played a Black Star before, I'd obviously heard about them. Their story's a very famous one, started by former Marshall employees, how they brought their own kind of flavor to the British side of the amp world, and I'd heard Fluff's take on them. I just don't like them. I don't like anything I've ever tried by them. No, if Black Star made a cable, I would definitely not play it. But I'd never encountered one in the wild. And because this community likes attainably priced tube amps, there have been quite a few questions about Black Star. So when Sweetwater asked if I was interested in trying this amp out, had to say yes. So a quick TLDR to get you up to speed with the St. James series. I'm also realizing how much my hands move when I talk. I'm not religious at all, so I had to look up who the namesake St. James was, hoping to find some clever hidden meaning, trying to cosplay Da Vinci Code. So St. James was the first apostle who was martyred for his faith. He's the patron saint of Spain, of fishermen, and of veterinarians? Cool, not sure if we're supposed to be reading into that at all, almost definitely not, so we move. And the St. James amp comes in both EL34 and 6L6 variants. Both are offered as a head, a 112 combo, and a 212 combo, all 50 watts, and there's also a matching 2x12 vertical cabinet. And tone-wise, the two variants are actually quite different, as reflected by the look. British amps are known for using EL34 amps, and as such, the EL34 version is more vintage voiced, classic, British sounding, and for some reason it has a clean boost, whereas the 6L6 version does not. What the f Black Star? What the 6L6 version does have, though, is a more modern sound and more than enough gain for the chugs, as you just heard. <laughs> If 
that's all you care about, good. Take care. I'll see you for the next video. Jordan, roll the outro card. As always, thank you so much for watching. But if you want to know more about how the St. James might be a future trendsetter in the world of amp design, and I do mean the whole design, let me tell you about it. So first, let's address the lightweight aspect. Because since Blackstar is marketing this as, quote, the world's lightest 50 watt valve amps, that's the first thing they want you to know about this amp. So how does it hold up in that regard? This 50 watt head weighs 6.7 kilograms, or just under 15 freedom weight units. For comparison, their 50 watt all tube series one head weighs about 19 kilograms, or 42 pounds. Even Jared James Nichols' 20-watt signature tube head weighs slightly over 20 pounds, a good 25% heavier than the St. James. Backs of gigging musicians everywhere rejoice, and rejoice even further when you hear about the cabs and combos. Blackstar have worked with Celestian to design a custom Zephyr speaker that has similar voicing to the rock and metal gold standard V30, just much lighter. This means the 112 combo comes in at 12.8 kilograms or 28 pounds, and the 212 combo is 16.8 kilograms or 37 pounds. The last combo that I owned was the PV6505 plus 112. The thing was over 60 pounds. So a 37 pound 212? That's insane. Even more so when you consider all the features they built in this thing, and we'll talk more about those in a second too. So it's light, it doesn't feel cheap though. The head shell feels solid and you've got nice little touches like the leather-like handle, the illuminated logo, and the brushed metal front plate. And in their quest to create a lightweight tube head, there are actually quite a few significant changes that theoretically make it more reliable, more robust, and more power efficient. They basically approach this with the attitude of, okay, if we're unburdened by tradition, how would we design an amp from the ground up today? And one of the key things they did is replace the transformers. Not with Decepticons for anyone concerned, but instead with a 400 volt switched mode power supply. And you don't really need to know what that is. All you need to know is it means this amp basically functions like you'd expect any normal modern electronic appliance to. It takes voltages from 100 to 240, so you can plug it in at any of your world tour dates without issue. <laughs> Transformers are giant blocks of iron in a very simplified sense, and that's where a lot of the weight comes from with traditional tube heads, especially high wattage ones. It's more power efficient, and the last benefit, which I actually think is one of the biggest, is that without transformers, you've got consistent direct current flowing to all components of the amp. No alternating current or any of the 50 or 60 cycle hum that comes with it. No 60 cycle hum. Sorry, Ryan. How amazing is that? Another energy efficient feature is that it automatically goes into power saving mode if it doesn't detect an input signal. That's very cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't exactly work with my amp switcher. The St. James doesn't recognize the signal out of the KHE as a valid input signal. So I wasn't able to use my usual setup with the pedal board and reamper. Not a huge deal, and this may just be an incompatibility with my specific hardware, but just something to be aware of if you use an amp switcher. You can also drop the amp from 50 watts to two watts for late night practice, or you can put it into a third sag mode, which is 50 watts but with a softer, more vintage dynamic response. Now, as for tone, the best way I can describe this is it sounds like an amp. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. If you knew nothing about the St. James and just plugged in, you'd think it's just a decent sounding, normal 50 watt tube head. It takes a second for it to boot up, but 
Once it's on, there's nothing that betrays the fact that this operates differently internally to a traditional tube head. It sounds like a tube head. More importantly, it feels like a tube head. It has the natural response of a tube amp because it is a tube amp. Or do you have to call it a valve amp because it's British? I don't know, we move. It has different guts to most traditional valve amps, but it is a valve amp. Nah, I'm just gonna use tube amp. Valve amp in an American accent sounds weird. But anyways, I don't know, it sounds good. I'm happy with the tones I'm getting from it. I'd be happy to record or gig with it. Just personally, it doesn't really have a defining characteristic. Like with the Mesa Rectifier, you know what you're getting with that huge, loose, scooped, saturated tone. With an orange rocker verb, you've got that raw, gritty mid-range using Kettner's super high fidelity, a lot of sizzle in the high end. The St. James, it's crunchy, I guess, but I don't know, it sounds like an amp, just in a lighter back-preserving package. <laughs> One is a big American clean. Channel two is, yeah, I was expecting American high gain. It's more like a tight modern British amp, a lot of mid-range there, and of course, a lot of gain. <laughs> For the demo, I've been running this through my normal signal chain. So that's into the Torpedo Live that's loaded with custom impulse responses Luke and I have been working on into my interface and recorded into the DAW. But you actually don't need any of that. The St. James comes with a reactive load, which firstly means if you accidentally turn your tube amp on without a speaker load, it won't blow itself up. For dumbasses like myself, that is an incredibly important feature. But also it lets you use this amp to record silently into your computer. You can do it all via USB. You don't need a load box, you don't need an interface, you don't need any of it. As soon as an idea pops in your head, just amp into computer and record. That's awesome. It eliminates a lot of the cost, a lot of the barrier to entry for home recording. Love that from Blackstar. One caveat on that though, this is one of the dumbest things I've seen on any fucking amp ever. The first time I plugged it in with USB, I was getting no sound and I couldn't figure out why. Spent about an hour checking and rechecking all the settings in my DAW, all the connections, all the settings on the amp, replaced all the leads. And you know what the problem was? You know when you use a tube amp and you hit the power and it's muted until you hit the standby switch as well? Turns out when it's in interface mode, it's the opposite. Taking the amp out of standby mutes it. The amp has to be on standby to make sound. What the fuck? Why? Granted, it looks like normal when you're using a regular speaker out, but I have no idea why the standby switch is designed to work the opposite way in any scenario, and it's dumb. Anyways. <laughs> Rig simulator software is really cool as well. They have not half-assed this. It's a very similar concept to what Two Notes does with the Wall of Sound plugin and the Dyn IRs, if you're familiar with those. The software is very comprehensive. You can basically select from a large number of cabs, mix and match them with selection of mics, move the mics around, adjust the EQ, presence, resonance, add different types of reverb, and for the St. James, you can even blend two cabs, do a virtual stereo rig. And that sets up a lot of interesting possibilities. Like you can have the amp running through a real cab for stage volume and then have the XLR with cab rig running to front of house, for example. <laughs> You know, honestly, I thought this lightest guitar tube amp in the world stuff was just a nice feature, but I thought framing that as the defining feature of this series was a bit bizarre. Guitarists have been carrying around heavy amps forever, and sure, having 50 watts of headroom for the same weight as a 20 watt lunchbox head is nice, really nice actually for gigging musicians, but is that really something you can sell an entirely new product line on, or is it just a gimmick? As it turns out, the way Blackstar have done it is actually a decent way to frame it because there are a lot of advantages and not just the one you initially think about, which for most people is war flashbacks to carrying a 60 pound tube amp up a badly lit, steep, narrow staircase while the vocalist does f all. With the St. James, even a combo 
that becomes a much more manageable situation. So I guess vocalists get one of these for your guitar players, that way you can continue to do f all during setup and teardown. But while being the world's first lightweight amp series may have been the basis and original concept of this line's design direction, the creative solutions and new technologies they came up with to get there are far more interesting than just uh, it's a tube amp that doesn't weigh very much compared to other tube amps. The power supply that replaces traditional transformers, for example. And because it makes the amp usable with any voltage in any country, for the brand, manufacturing is more efficient because they don't need to make different versions for different regions. The St. James is more power efficient, which, yeah, it's a bit annoying. It doesn't work with my particular amp switcher, but anything that puts a dent in electricity bills right now is very welcome. And in theory, the circuitry should make for a more reliable amp. Always good, especially on the road if your amp is reliable. Guitar players don't agree on everything, but I think we can agree on that. Whatever they've done with Celestine to develop the custom Zephyr speaker is pure magic, apparently. Check out Ola's video if you're interested in how the combo or the cab sounds. It's fairly crispy. The power soak is integral for a modern amp. Being able to drop it down to two watts is awesome if you're playing at home. Also, love the inclusion of the reactive load and the cab rig simulator. One step closer to those being industry standards for any new amps coming out. Would have been great if it came with the noise gate and a boost to get into that modern metal territory in one package, but now we're just nitpicking. Final thoughts, there are a lot of interesting ideas packed into the St. James. It could be the catalyst for a new arms race between amp manufacturers who can create the best non-back-breaking high wattage amp, or it could end up as a cult favorite because right now, no one is approaching tube amp design quite like this with an emphasis on the maximum amount of watts per pound. Either way, a lot of cool tech, good sounding versatile amp, and very, very useful in certain use cases. But these are just my thoughts. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the Blackstar St. James? And do you want to see other manufacturers try to implement some of these ideas? Any and all thoughts, leave them down below. But that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, make sure to hit that like button. It actually really helps out with the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Maybe subscribe, that way I can personally drop guitar information and content into your feed. You can also hit the notification bell, that way you know the minute a new video goes live. Massive shout out to the awesome patrons who make this and all the other content possible. If you want to support the channel as well and get bonus extras, link in the description. You can also join as a channel member to get custom emoticons. And if you're looking for more guitar content, you can click a tap right there. Social media, merch and discord server links are in the description as always thank you so much for watching you've been awesome and i will see you for the next video